Okay, I'm just going to talk about Aquinas' view of the soul. I found it quite difficult to get to grips with, so I thought maybe now I sort of understand, I should try and explain it, just, just for my own self as much as anything. Um, Aquinas believed that the soul was, cap was capable of existing outside and apart from the body after physical death. However, he's not a substance dualist like Descartes, because actually what Aquinas says is that the soul isn't a substance on its own. It, it can subsist, like exist without the body, but actually because it is not complete, it isn't a substance. Um, and this, he's using the word substance in um, Aristotelian terms with the idea that although it can exist, it isn't a full and complete thing which means it doesn't qualify to be a substance. It's a bit like um, you wouldn't say the arm of a chair was a substance outside of the fact or when it's joined to the chair. Like, if you took the arm away from a chair, it would no longer have the same value and qualities as it did when it was attached to the chair. So that's kind of what he's saying. He's saying that although, you know, you can take the arms off chairs, you can take the soul out of the body when you die you can't actually qualify as a substance in its own right. So he's not a substance dualist. But um, another reason for this is that he says that the soul is the first principle of life. And this means that actually it's, it's almost like making a cake in the sense that the first thing you might put in, let's see, butter and sugar, okay? So the first, so that's kind of the soul. The soul is the sugar or the butter, whichever one you want to think of it as. And it's the first ingredients that you put in to making your cake. But actually, um, although you couldn't, ex the cake couldn't exist properly without them, um, it, the sugar itself is not the cake. You know, it doesn't complete the cake. It, it allows it to fulfill itself. So, in this sense, um, the soul is the formal cause of the body. But it's important to remember that actually Aquinas isn't treating the soul as a separate entity. I've used some terms like part of and like the sugar example. These examples suggest that the soul is almost like some thing you can put into a body to create some kind of um, life force. But actually, Aquinas says that the soul is not a body, it's not a substance, it's not a thing, it is the act of a body. Um, and this is coming, it's paralleling um, Aristotle completely in the sense that because we are alive, because we have life, we have a soul. The soul is a kind of a consequence of being alive. I mean, um, Aristotle wrote that. Um, the soul is what animates the body. It's this kind of, it's almost like a car with its engine running. It's the thing that gives you the characteristics of being human, of being alive. So even though so far um, Aquinas seems quite confused in the sense that I've used several different examples which all actually structure the soul as either something physical and then something not physical or, or something that can be existent and something that's kind of a, a reaction. But the fact is, is that obviously, like Hume would say, any kind of analogy is, is weak in its own, in itself. So I think if you kind of get to grips with the analogies, you can see from different perspectives the, the approach Aquinas takes to the soul. And it's very complex and very difficult to categorise. Um, Aquinas also says that the soul is equivalent to the mind or the intellect, which I think is quite interesting. Um, and I also think I'll use it as a bit of a linking point in, in an exam if... You know how sometimes they'll give, like, in the title they'll say soul or mind, and then you're kind of a bit like, which one do you mean? What is the actual difference? Well, I can just be like, you know, Aquinas said they were the same things. So we're going to go with that. Um, yeah, he said that um, the intellect, intellect is not an activity of, like, bodily organs. It is an activity of the mind, but it's still an activity of the human individual. And this is how the sort of the soul and the body are linked in a way because we can have activities or we can have 
reactions in ourselves which are not wholly bodily explainable through physical terms like intellect is what he's saying but they are still um, an act of humanity so for example the intellect and he says that rationality is the intelligence form that is taken in animal life so the fact that we are rational creatures and we use reason um, we can have this idea of the soul and the product of the animal and the individual uh, to summarise if I've made any sense to summarise I'll say that the soul is seen by Aquinas as the formal cause of the human the reason and rationality that we have is seen as possibly the efficient cause and the beatific vision is the final cause. Now I'll quickly go into the beatific vision because this kind of this is how Aquinas attempts to reconcile the Christian teaching of bodily resurrection and Aristotle's very inextricably linked soul to the body. You know, and it, it kind of and Aristotle said it doesn't survive death. Reason might, he speculated that reason might be something that was eternal, but not the soul. And Aquinas, obviously being a lover of Aristotle, wanted to reconcile the two and um, find a nice, neat conclusion. And what Aquinas says is that the soul can exist after physical death with the beatific vision. The beatific vision is, in a sense, the pure entity of God and the wisdom and the appreciation that a soul can have for God. And this is the, in a very platonic sense actually, this is the kind of want that the soul has. It wants to go and be attached and be in the, in the presence of the beatific vision. And it is this place where the soul is finally fulfilled. And this is how we have this afterlife and this is how the soul exists because it is kind of... Um, transported to the beatific vision. Um, now, my understanding is obviously very limited, as I'm sure you'll be able to see through my sparse <laughs> explanation, but I hope that it's made some sense. And if you have like any help, any knowledge that could help me understand this, um, please just comment and if I've got anything wrong comment as well because you know I'm sure I've said stuff that's just a lie um so I'm really I hope it's helped and I hope I've not lied too much